All right, so here we are live. Facebook was not kind to me today, but we got it all figured out. So um, I'm so happy that we're gonna get started in a couple of minutes. Uh, my name's Chef Diane, and I am the co-founder of the Family Farm Box. And um, also, I am the co-founder of Farm Box Kids Cooking Camp. So I've been teaching cooking classes to um, friends like you for years from ages four to 13. Um, and so today I think we're gonna have a really great time learning a new skill. And it's an important one that everyone's gonna need to use um, in their cooking life. So we're gonna learn how to saute. So um, let me just show you some of the things that you're gonna need to have for your uh, live cooking class today. Hello, Julie, I've got the girls on, the Harrison girls are on. I've got Anya on, um, so happy to see my friends. Um, yeah, so times are different right now. We're not going to school, we're not going to sports, we're not going to dance, but we can cook. And cooking is such an empowering skill to have. It is creative, it contributes to your family, it's fun. Um, so we're gonna have a really good time. Um, making turkey taco bowls today. Um, so let me just show you some of the things that you're gonna need to have set up. Um, I'm actually just gonna use a remote burner today, um, but you'll be at your stove top to saute your turkey. Um, hi, how are you, Nikki and your little boys? And I've got Maya on today, the Figueroa family, the Fig fam, uh, the Lamb fam. How are you all holding up during our stay at home? Uh, time. I'm so glad that you joined me today. I'm so glad we're filling up our time with things that are uh, filling up our souls. And hi, Karen. <laughs> hi, Sweener family is on deck. Hi. I've got Jill and Anya. I've got the Massey family. Um, so I'm just going to show you a couple of the things that um, Jamoes. Hello, Jamoes. Hello, Jocelyn girls. Uh, Jack, Jack is cooking today. All right, he's my new little chef. Um, Jack, someday we're gonna teach you how to make pink pasta. And um, I've got the whole Fielder family, Luca and Ava. Oh, thank you, Tiffany. Um, so happy to see you guys. So I'm gonna show you today turkey taco bowls. You're gonna need um, turkey, ground beef. You could use uh, a meat substitute if you like, um, ground chicken. Um, so that's the first thing that you're going to need. And then also, in order to um, saute, we're going to add some flavors. We've got onions. I'm going to get garlic. I forgot to grab my garlic. Um, but we've got onions that we're going to cut. And then for my turkey bowl, I just put out some things that I'm going to um, build my bowl with. So I've got white rice cooked already, warmed up. And so when I put my turkey on top, I'm going to have um, some warm turkey. Um, hi, Hannah. Hannah's watching today. She's probably our littlest chef on, on our show today. And then I've also got some grated cheese. I've got some corn and um, some beautiful cherry tomatoes that um, I'm going to put on top of my bowl. But you can make your bowl any way that you like. Um, so if you ha don't have those things and you're thinking in your head that that's something you'd like to make, maybe you can go grab them. You're also going to need, of course, we've got salt and pepper. So I like to do salt. Um, in a bowl like this so I can pinch and I'm going to show you how to how to season your food today So salt and pepper you're going to need olive oil or avocado oil or vegetable oil Whatever kind of oil you like to use and then um, we've got for our homemade guacamole Which you guys are going to love that ripe avocados Hi frontier families on hi Stephanie. There's my partner Stephanie um, We cook together. We do kids camp together um, so we've got ripe avocados, we've got lemon or lime, you could use either one. I've got some tools to mash my avocado, um, to squeeze my lemons. Um, but the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna get our hands washed. So if you haven't washed your hands yet, take a moment, wash your hands, of course, soap and water, you wanna get in between your fingers, top of the hands, bottom of the hands, 20 seconds. Um, and then a good rinse, and then also rinse off whatever um, vegetables you're using. So I rinsed my cilantro, and then I wrapped it in a paper towel so it gets nice and dry. Hi, my best friend Lori is watching too. Is Jake with you, Lori? 
and then we've got green onions. And while you're washing your hands, I'm gonna go grab my garlic. So I'll be right back. So I have my garlic, it's kind of a cheater garlic. It's already peeled and it comes um, wrapped in a nice little plastic package. So um, it's a nice way to use garlic very quickly, but it's super fresh. Um, so yeah, so wash your hands, wash your produce, and um, let's talk about cooking. We are um, learning new things. We are experiencing family time. So family time is a great, uh, time to cook together and these taco these turkey taco bowls that we're making are going to be great for a family dinner So what I do when I do taco night or bowl night is I just put all the ingredients out in bowls and everyone helps themselves So you build your bowl with whatever you want on the bottom So I have white rice today. You could use any kind of cooked grain. You could use cabbage instead or lettuce instead um, So you can make your turkey bowls to your taste um, just by setting all the things up for your family um, to enjoy. So the first thing that we're gonna do um, after we wash our hands is um, um, start to saute. So sauteing is a skill that, um, again, you're gonna use for the rest of your life. Once you master it, this is a life skill. Um, and what it means is to cook something very quickly in oil. And the word saute means to jump. So you want your food to jump in the pan. So uh, in making our turkey, ground turkey or chicken or beef, whatever you're making today, we first got to do a little bit of prep. So I'm actually going to take my little portable oven out of the way for right now and we can start cooking. So um, my cutting board here, actually, I want to make sure that you can see. And then I'm going to pick a knife that fits my hand. So if you are Younger, three to six, three to seven, you're gonna use a smaller knife. Um, if you are um, a little bit older, so this is a great knife for anywhere from eight on up. Um, and then this is a knife for anybody who's developed great skills with this knife and then they can move on to um, that one. So, um, all right, so my friend Lori is making this for her son, so we've got, we've got Families on here, everyone's cooking, learning new skills. And um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start our mise en place, which means to put everything in its place in French. So there's two French words, saute and mise en place. And um, so we can get ready to cook. So I have green onions again. And remember last week we talked about cutting. These are gonna be sliced. So I'm gonna use uh, my knife with my firm grip, I'm gonna hold onto the handle, I'm gonna wrap my fingers around, and then this hand is gonna be the claw grip. So you're always gonna have your hands placed like that. Make sure you have a cutting board that doesn't slip around. And then for the green onions, I keep these ends on because they're a little handle for me to hold on to when I'm cutting. I can just hold onto that handle and um, I won't get too close to my hands when I cut. For the green onions, the tops are like a little bit ragged. They've been in the store and they've kind of been, um, they lose their freshness faster than the rest of the onion. So you're gonna hold your claw grip and just cut off the tops of the onions first. And then you can compost these or um, you can toss them in the trash. Uh, and then I'm just gonna do one onion at a time. Even though you might wanna get a little bit fancier and cut uh, more onions than once, claw grip here and then I'm gonna pick up the back of my knife, tip stays down, I make a little mark in my food and then I push forward. And I pick up the knife again and push forward. And I always keep my knife tip down when I'm making this cut. Unless something's really big. Then I have to lift up and, and um, make my mark in my food. So these might make you cry. The good thing that you wanna do is have a sharp knife that goes right through it so you don't spend too much time over the onions that would make you cry. So you wanna be able to do it really quickly. So we've got three onions or four onions for this. Um, it's just gonna give great flavor. We also have coriander or um, cumin that we're gonna put in this. But if you like spices, like I like smoked paprika, I'm gonna put that in mine. Oregano, if you like hot sauce, you can put hot sauce in there. Um, but 
before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's just get our onions going. So while you're cutting your onions, let me see who else I've had that's um, joined in. I've got my friend Linda. She's got two kids. I haven't met them, um, but gosh, I sure would like to someday. And I've also got the Rollins, the Rockin' Rollins in the house. So keep your eyes on your food while you cut. Keep that claw grip. You can also do a different knife if you like. The sharper, the better. Even though it sounds dangerous, it's actually better to use a sharp knife than a dull one. So we've got green onions and garlic that are gonna be our base for our saute. Take your time, you don't have to go fast, unless you're starting to cry. Then you can ask one of your siblings to help you cut the onions or one of your parents to help you cut the onions. So we've got that that we need for our saute. We've got garlic. So I'm gonna show you another thing you can do to make garlic easier to cut. A couple cloves. All you need is one clove, but I'm gonna do a couple cloves just because it makes it easier to cut. We've got a nice big garlic clove here. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your knife, so either, either one of these knives will work. Take your knife, Take your hand and curl your fingers up. Put your hand on top of the knife so you're not, um, you're not putting your hand close to the blade, it's just the top of the knife. And then with your body, you're going to press down. So now um, you've got a garlic clove that's nice and flat. And I'm just going to reorganize myself so everyone can see. So you've got a nice garlic, a nice flat garlic clove. It makes it a lot easier to cut. And remember what we did uh, when we minced last week. So press that garlic clove. And um, hi, guys. It's great to see you, Rollins family. I've got Star family in the house. Nice to see you. Um, Adriana, is that better with my board? Can you see it a little bit better? Um, I guess the messages are showing. Maybe I should scoot it back a little bit more. Great. So remember when we cut last week, we uh, learned how to mince, again, with our knife, the tip of the knife on the board, and then um, the tip facing at 11 o'clock and the bottom of the knife facing at four o'clock. Then our hand goes on top of the knife. So instead of using the claw grip, our hand goes on top and then we just pick up the knife and we rock it through the food. Just stay in this little zone right here that's V-shaped. So you just wanna keep your knife going through the food, scrape it back together, go through again, and we mince until this garlic, we don't want it too small because garlic will burn very easily. It's very high in oil, um, so it um, can burn. So we're just gonna go through this until it's the size of about a grain of rice, a big grain of rice. So that's what we want it to look like. And um, then the last thing that we need to do to mise en place for our turkey bowls is cilantro. So here we have fresh cilantro. Again, I washed this, rinsed it, wrapped it in paper towels to get the extra moisture off. It's really hard to cut herbs that are um, wet. They'll kind of mush all over your board. So get them nice and dry and then we um, take any stems and we just toss them to the side, pick off the stems, um, pick off the leaves, and then put the stems to the side. And again, we're gonna mince these. So I wanna make sure I have enough room on my board so I'm not crowding myself. I'm just gonna move my garlic over, move my onions over, get a little pile of cilantro, just about a little handful, and put it in the middle of the board. So while you're picking your cilantro, I'm gonna say hi to Lalith. Who's cooking today, Lalith? Both the girls, or? And then I also have on board. Hi, Joey. So here I have about a handful of cilantro. You can make more if you like. I love that fresh the fresh flavor of cilantro. Put that to the side and we're gonna mince this as well. So remember you hold your knife, finger, thumb, wrap the hands around, this hand, 
fingers are up, back of the knife goes up and down, tip of the knife stays down. So working through the food. Doesn't have to be too minced up, because we're just gonna sprinkle this into the turkey. So there we have it, our little mise en place. Now if you wanted to, like for example, I've got some cherry tomatoes that I'm gonna add to mine. You can cut those as you watch as well. So cherry tomatoes. Again, you wanna have your claw grip and you wanna make it just a nice cut like that. You can cut them in half or you can cut them into quarters. So that's an option. Again, I have cheese, I have corn, I have uh, a grain that I'm gonna use for the bottom of my bowl. And then with my mise en place all in place, I'm gonna start to cook. So ground turkey, move this out of the way so I'm a little bit lower. And I'm gonna get my burner. I'm doing this on a burner because if I'm in my kitchen, it's a little bit hard to see on the phone what I'm doing. So this way I can kind of, I can have you right in front of me and I can show you. But if you're cooking in the kitchen, you're gonna have your parents turn on the oven, the stove top for you. If you are small, get a stool so you can get up over your food. When you saute, two things. With your pan, you wanna hold your pan in your non-dominant hand. So my I'm a right hand person, so I'm gonna hold it in my left hand with your utensil you're gonna to use to stir, you hold it like you're gonna shake someone's hand. So you hold it with the V of your palm and that way you can turn the tip of the utensil down into your um, pan and look what happens to my elbow. It's not down here, I don't have my hand here. When I turn that down, my elbow is up, I'm away from the heat, I'm nice and safe. Um, so remember, dominant, non-dominant hand, your left hand holds on, your right hand holds on to the utensil like you're gonna shake its hand and then you turn it down. The next thing that we need when we saute, this is, this is control and safety right here. The next thing we need is heat. So remember, safety, you wanna make sure that you have your parents help you with this. So saute is to jump so we want the food to jump in the pan it needs heat to jump in the pan so um first i gotta get it warm and i just want to make sure that i can feel the heat radiating don't get your hand too close just feel, hold your hand over you can feel the heat radiating take your olive oil or avocado oil whatever kind of oil you like to use and just put enough olive oil in to coat the bottom of the pan it's not going to be um too much it's going to be different from my pan than for your pan so just enough so it's shiny on the bottom you can see that every, every part of it's covered, but you don't have too much. And then adjust your heat, should be medium high. I'm gonna let that heat up, and then I'm the oil's gonna start to shimmer a little bit. You're gonna see a little bit of movement, just kind of like a hot sidewalk on a summer day. You're gonna see a little bit of movement, and as soon as you see that movement, you're going to put your food in the pan. The thing that you don't wanna do is you don't wanna just dump it in. You want to, I put this on a plate because I'm just gonna slide this gently into the pan. If I dump it in, if I'm you know, over here trying to get it into the pan, it's gonna splash on me. So I wanna make sure that you're just sliding it gently in. I'm starting to see a little bit of movement. And one thing also you can do when you're sauteing to see if your oil's hot enough, you can just drop a little bit of food in there and see if it starts to sizzle. So um, I just put a little green onion in and it's starting to sizzle a little bit, so I'm ready. So. Here, my utensil, I can't hold it onto my pan as I slide in the food, but I'm just gonna gently, slowly slide that in. And you hear that noise? That's what you wanna hear. You wanna hear that nice sizzle happening. And when you first put your food in, it's gonna stick to the bottom. Just let it stay there. Just let that food kinda stay there and um, brown on the bottom. As soon as this browns on the bottom, we'll be able to move it around. You can take your utensil and just gently with the tip, separate it a little bit. And now I'm gonna add in my aromatics or my um, my onions and garlic. So garlic goes in, onions go in. Careful you don't touch the pan. You don't go so high up that you splash yourself, but go low enough so you don't touch the pan. And then I'm gonna do brown pepper. So 
I'm going to do about 10 grinds. If you're doing pinches instead of grinds, you can do about uh, two pinches of pepper. Um, and a pinch should look like this, three th fingers and a thumb. You get in there and you get a nice amount of salt or pepper. So it's about an eighth of a teaspoon once, you're, um, once you get that good pinch on. So Christy is, and Vince is asking me if video is working. So are you guys watching me right now? Can you see what I'm doing? Um, I'm getting all my signals that I'm live, but. So I'm Pepper. Hi Leah, how are your girls? Everyone's holding up well, I hope. And then um, about two pinches of salt. I'm using kosher salt. You can use pink Himalaya. Pink Himalayan sweet sea salt. You can use um, regular salt, whatever kind of salt you want. And then I also have uh, coriander. I'm, not, I'm gonna use coriander, and that's the seed of cilantro, so it kind of ties in the flavor of the cilantro I'm gonna put on top. Um, and about a quarter to a half teaspoon, I'm just gonna sprinkle it in. And again, with my seasoning, I'm gonna season so I see it evidently on my food, like a little snow-capped mountain. Now you see I haven't stirred this yet. I'm letting it sit a little while before I start to stir it because I want it to be brown. And now as I stir it, it's releasing from the bottom of the pan. I'm getting some brown, some browning of the meat. Hold on to your pan, hold on to your spatula so it's nice and safe. And then here I have, it's starting to brown here. Now when it's done cooking, this takes about 15 minutes. When it's done, I'll be able to taste it for seasoning. So even if I didn't season it enough to start, I got it enough to make it taste flavorful and yummy. But then when I'm ready, when my cookie's all cooked, I've got tasting spoons. So um, I bought a lot of them because I'm gonna taste things several times, but I'm always gonna taste and then put it in the dishwasher. You never wanna reuse your tasting spoon. So that's a little tip. So how's everybody's turkey looking at home? Mine is cooking pretty quickly. So I think I've got just about maybe five more minutes. And with the spoon, with your spatula or a wooden spoon or whatever you're using, use the tip of it just to break up the pieces of meat. So it's, you have nice, small, uniform pieces of meat. Once it starts to get cooked, you'll be able to break it up a little bit more. So, so far in this, we have green onions, we have garlic, we have ground meat. I'm using turkey, salt, pepper, coriander. If you want to, you can add other spices. You could add heat, you could add hot sauce. If you like heat, um, just keep on breaking that up. Good, so now I've got little pieces of meat and they are actually almost cooked. Good, oh, I've got my, I've got my nephew, actually my grand nephew on Ollie. He's one years old. Hi, Julie, thank you. It smells really yummy. I hope everyone's smelling really good in here in their houses too. So that's the fun thing about food. People walk in your house and they say, oh, it smells so good. So here, I've got my, um, my turkey all made. I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna let you guys keep on cooking. And then as soon as it's cool enough, I'll taste it and I'll see if I need to add anything to it. So just give it a little blow. I'm tasting for enough. Oh, so um, uh, my friend um, Adriana is using vegan meat and it cooked a lot faster. So that's, it's because it's already kind of cooked in advance. So um, it does take quicker uh, for non-meat uh, substitutes. We also might take longer for ground beef than turkey or chicken. So I'm tasting it. And what I want to taste for is salt and pepper and whatever kind of spices I put in. I think mine tastes perfect. I hope yours does too. And then I'm going to put in my cilantro. 
So just stir that in last. You don't want it to cook, just give it flavor at the end. So we've almost got these turkey bowls going. We just need to make my favorite thing to put on top of a taco or a turkey bowl is guacamole. I'm gonna give you a very basic guacamole recipe. It's the way my daughter likes to make it. We do it with avocado. So we should have, you should have pulled out already avocado, lemon or lime, salt, pepper, garlic powder. You can add in chopped onions, you could add in tomatoes. Um, some people like heat, so you could put in a jalapeno. My nephew, Tori, is on right now. He loves heat, so he could add some chili peppers. I like to keep it a little bit mild. I'm gonna get my stove out of the way for right now. So, guacamole starts with nice, ripe avocados. You can tell your avocado is ripe, by looking inside, you check the take off the little um, stem there and you look inside and if it's nice and green, then it's ripe. And then also just give it a little gentle, gentle pressure on the neck um, to see if it's ripe. One thing that's really important when you're cutting avocados is you wanna make sure that you are being nice and safe with the uh, um, avocado, because they're kind of funky. So you're gonna hold your hand on top of the avocado and you see I have my fingers curled up. I'm not holding it like this, fingers curled up. I have my knife, you could use this one, you could use this one. Actually, I'm gonna use my smaller chef's knife, hold on to the handle, wrap my hands around the blade. And then you're at a, a right from the side, at the tip of the avocado, you're going to press in and you're gonna hit the pit. Then you're gonna turn the avocado around and around and around that pit until you make a cut all the way around the around the perimeter of the avocado. And then you're gonna take the avocado and twist it. And then you've got two halves of the avocado here. Now you could squeeze out the seed. That one just fell right out. Or very safely, you can use a knife to um, take out the seed. When you're using a knife to take out the seed, this hand stays up high. This hand holds onto your knife, nice strong grip, and you give it a little, tiny little thump, and then you twist the avocado and you take the seed out. And then you use a towel or a knife, or a towel to take it off of your knife. So now I've got two halves of avocado. I'm gonna get a bowl so I can make my daughter's favorite guacamole. And um, you're gonna take your half of avocado. Take the tip of your knife. You're going to draw little lines in your avocado. Being careful you don't press too hard. It's very lightly, you're very lightly gonna draw those lines. Turn it the opposite direction, draw lines the other way. Take a spoon and scoop it out. And now I have a dice. So I've got my avocado kind of already started with the smushing. I might have to take out a few little um, bits of avocado that don't look good. Again, you're gonna cut lines and then make lines across to create your dice. I've got two avocados, so I'm just gonna keep on going while you guys are um, scooping your avocados. Hi, Brandy, hi, Josh. Again, if you need to see this again, Take out this little stem, make sure your avocado is green and fresh inside. Hold on to your avocado with your fingers up. Press, spin it, spin, 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 and crack it open. I'm gonna take out the this, this seed. This hand's up. This hand, this knife is gonna go in. This one's a tough one. Turn it, and there we go. So I've got two avocados in my guacamole. The next thing that's gonna go into our guacamole is fresh lemon juice or lime juice, either way. So you can cut a lemon. I'll show you how. This avocado is a little tougher. We'll have to smash it, give it some extra smashing. So with our lemon, 
we're going to hold it with our claw grip. Hold your knife safely, claw grip here, make a tiny little mark in it, and then push forward. Then I like to use my handy dandy juicer to get the juice out. But if you don't have one, the best thing to do is just take your hand and put it over your bowl and your hand's gonna act like a little strainer to get the seeds out. And you can just squeeze like that. So now I have my seeds left behind. I'm starting with one lemon. I might need more. Again, I'm gonna taste this. That's why I have all my tasting spoons. Then you can use a fork or you can use a potato masher. So I'm gonna use a potato masher and just mash it until it's chunky. And a little bit smooth. I mashed it. I've got garlic powder. I give it a little flavor. I've got my salt. So I'm gonna give it two big pinches of salt. So remember my pinch is three fingers and a thumb. There you go, I did extra because I like salt. And then about three cranks of fresh pepper. So that's it, that's all you need is avocado, lemon, garlic powder, salt and pepper, um, but you could add what you like to it. You could add jalapeno, you could add um, cilantro, you can add chopped tomatoes. So here's my guacamole. You might like it smoother. I like it a little bit of chunky, chunkiness. So now I've got everything I need to make my bowls. So exciting. And again, you can set this up for your family. You can have all of your different accompaniments on top. I've got fresh corn. I've got rice for my base. I have um, cheese. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my rice. You could use lettuce if you wanted to. I do that a lot because I don't eat as much grains as I used to. And then you're going to do your browned turkey. You could even do taco shells. Hey, just think you go to Chipotle you buy one of these and it's probably like $10. You could make a whole family meal for that. Feed your whole family. You can put in corn some chopped tomatoes, we've got some cheese. And then of course, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to taste my guacamole. So first before I put it on my bowl, I'm gonna taste it. And this is the danger of making guacamole and being the um, taster is that, hmm, a little lemony. Usually you wanna taste it. Um, by the time you get done tasting, there's none left. This is delicious though. I should have had to start with half of the lemon though, so I hope it's not too lemony for you. So then I'm gonna put guacamole on top. Some tomatoes. And here's our beautiful taco bowl. Looks just like that. So easy to make. Your kids can make this again and again for you. It's one of those recipes that you can just own it. So kids practice it and then next time it's dinner, it's time to make dinner. You can say, mom, can I make tacos for you guys? Um, one thing that you wanna do after you get done cooking, families, encourage your kids to clean up. That's a really important part of cooking. Or if they're the cooks, maybe you can clean up with them. And um, show me your pictures. I'd love to see how your food looks. I'd love to see how it turned out. Give me your feedback. I had such, so much fun watching, uh, watching your comments today but I'd love to see how your food looks. Thank you so much for joining me today. I can't wait to cook with you again next Wednesday, 11 o'clock. Um, we're gonna do a kids cook along. If you have some suggestions of things that you would like to learn, I'd love to hear them. So thank you so much for joining me and I hope you have a wonderful, delicious week. Bye.